Okay, I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about animation. So, um, first thing that I noticed was if you're working with the animator, you go in and you take a look at the different states that you have, and you can clearly see that if you're going to have a lot of different kinds of animations, you're going to have a big mess when you connect the edges together on these different states. So you could do it that way. If you don't have a lot of different states. Um, and then I did make reference to a video that I watched called Escaping Unity Animator Hell. And it makes sense to me because if you look at all the different states this person has, and I'm sure once I get further into development, I'll have a similar situation. So Lost Relic Games. Um, let me just take a look and see if I can find his name. Um, it doesn't look like the person who owns this channel gives their name, but I'll definitely give a plug to their YouTube channel because um, I just had a quick reference and I'd watched it previously, just getting the basic idea for how to set up the code for the animation. So one thing he recommends, and I'll come back to the main game object in a second, is changing the animator state. Mine's a little bit different from what they showed in the video because I'm gonna glue together a few things so that I can reuse this class for everything that I want to animate in my game. So I've got it working for the main player and the basic idea behind the way I'm organizing it so that I can reuse it over and over is that I've got a function that's acting like a constructor, but Unity doesn't let you just call the constructor for another class for mono behavior. So I can add one of these as a component to my player. Um, up at the top, I've got this game object, and then you call add component. And the way you create an instance of the class is you do type of, and then the name of the class, followed by as, and then you give the name of the class again. After I create one as a component for the player, then I'm going to pass in the name of the of the object itself. So inside Unity, I have Unicat. It's the name for the player object. So I'm going to pass that in. And then in my sprite animator, it's got that name. So if I have a different object I want to animate, it's going to keep track of which one it is that way. And I'm going to be consistent with the names for changing the directions against my camera. So forward, left, right, back. I'm just going to keep it with four directions. And then there could be different kinds of animations I want to do. So this one's just taking care of walking. So right now, it's got the default. And later, I will change this so that I could have it be different on things. So in case I'm jumping or maybe attacking, depending on what I want it to do for the different states. Um, and then lastly, I would add on the direction. The way I'm naming my animations is these three different things, the name of the game object, the state, so either walking or jumping, um, and then the direction, forward, left, right, back, separated by underscore. So when I go into um, animation, you'll see right now I've got Unicat walk front set, and I've got the four different ones set for Unicat. So these are all assigned to the Unicat game object. So I should be able to switch between them. Once I've got the names set up, when I make a call to change animator state, I want to pass in whether I'm walking or jumping, and then the direction, forward, left, right, back. If it's um, not different, I'm going to return. And if anything about it is different, then I'm going to make changes. So I'll change the name, um, the direction, and the current state will be updated. And then you just do animator.play 
and pass in the, the combined concatenated um, naming scheme that I've got. And it should switch to that animation state. That should simplify things a lot. So that way you don't have to sit in Unity trying to connect the different states together and then keeping track of which one you're at with parameters. Um, and then in my game, uh, it took me a while to debug this. But I think this would help you a lot if you're looking at 3D and you're doing 2D animation. Um, so this is how it took me a couple hours to debug this. So I've got my controller input, horizontal, vertical. Vertical is for moving forward or back. Horizontal is for moving left or right. You want to keep it relative to the amount of time that's going by. So I found there were differences between whether I would simulate running the game um, full screen or not. So if I did maximize on play, if that's on or if it's off, it does affect the amount of time that goes by. And you would see changes if you don't use calculations with delta time. Um, so that's helping to adjust to keep um, the same updates depending on how quickly your game is being simulated. I'm going to move the player based on translate. So X and Z, but with the controller, I have to do negative direction and the X. Um, and then if I want to play my animations, I have to keep track of the direction. So let me show you what's going on here. I've got a what really helped me debug this was debug draw ray. And I kept track of the forward direction on the transform. And then I was also looking at some different colors for the direction. Let me do that. And so I'll have a blue for the Z axis direction on. Yeah. For forward. And I wanted it for a ground check. Transform dot forward. And then I also had one that helped me for the right direction. So I had that for red to match with the x axis. Uh, right. Okay, 100 might be a little bit big. We'll see. I just want to be able to check it. I'm going to move zoom out of the way, come back. Um, we'll start running it. So you can see. The ground check transform that I used in a previous video to control jumping is what I'm actually rotating for the sprite itself. Because I'm sorry, um, to keep track of which direction the player is facing. Whereas the sprites themselves are always facing the camera forward. Okay, so I added a few more hills in the background. We can go explore and you can see the sparkles and that's great. So it's really nice to be able to keep track of animations this way and not have to worry too much about keeping my code disorganized so that the next thing I would want to do is once I have the direction set, do a dot product against the forward direction that the sprites are facing. So transform is keeping track of the forward direction for the sprites towards the camera. So forward faces the camera. If it agrees by about 0.8, this is enough to make me want to change the animation. So if it agrees forward, I'm going to walk front. If it's negative and agrees that direction, I'm going to walk back. 
and then transform right. Negative is actually, if you think that the sprites are facing the camera and you think what direction would be it to its right, that would be like audience facing right, which would be if I'm looking at, at the, into, into the scene, it would be the opposite. So for me, that would actually be to the left. Um, so a little bit confusing if you find swapping, swapping things in your mind happens quite often, which is the case for me. I always get things backwards all the time. Then I have to draw it and then check and then swap the negative if it's not moving the right way. Um, and then we get the left and right working. Okay, the jumping I had working from previous video and then for controlling the camera, I'm actually using the pan that you've seen from the video I did with the animation and controlling gravity with different planets. And I'm using delta time to make sure that that's consistent. And I need to multiply by quite a bit in order to compensate for delta time being quite small. And then we just rotate the sprites themselves to match with moving the camera. So I think it helps if I don't maximize the screen, I'll press play, and then I go to the console. We don't have any bugs. Um, so there's no output there. If we look at the scene, um, while I'm moving around, if I rotate the camera, you can see the sprites rotating to face the camera. So it really helps a lot. And of course, there's more for me to do because if I have the camera pretty far away, then I have to worry about it going into a hill. Um, and this would be enough for now to do a video just demonstrating how you could control sprites with the animation. So I think it really helps to have a separate class to keep things organized. And then you just call change animator state um, and making sure that we've got the sprites always facing the camera. Fixed update. That's taking care of jumping and gravity because I'm, since I'm in space, I'm probably going to have a few scenes where we'll have the gravity shift to a different kind of planet. Um, yeah, and that code was before for taking care of different planets. I'm not going to shift right now for the rotation, so we'll have that uncommented later. If you have any questions about anything because your milestone's going to be due soon, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, yeah, there's quite a bit going on. Um, I've got the flare mask taking care of gravity as well. So for the collisions, I have to take care of that. Um, I did change the gravity to be quite high, so that way it feels like the jumping is performing a little bit faster. It just feels snappier. Um, so I played around with those values a little bit too. Um, definitely a lot to keep track of. Uh, it is frustrating to debug, so I found that drawing the geometry really helps a lot. Okay, the other thing I noticed when I was debugging was that when I go to actually change the direction of the ground check transform, I'm not going by the delta time. I'm just taking the raw input from um, the controller because otherwise I was getting a lot of bugs that way. Okay, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, hopefully everyone's making good progress on their projects. I hope you're doing well.